Imo Police Command foils attack on Omuma Police Station. Imo State Government also condemns raising of home of President General Ohanese in Digbo. And Department of State Services says it has uncovered plans by elements to stoke violence. These and more on Panorama. I'm Naja Atsitijani. Officers of the Imo State Police Command have neutralized four suspected members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra alleged during an attempted attack on Omuma police station. The incident, which occurred in the early hours of Sunday, 20th March 2022, involved suspected members of IPOB and ESN who attacked the station in their numbers with various improvised explosive devices. A statement by the police public relations officer Imo Command Michael Abata indicates that the attackers shot sporadically at the station but were repelled by the command's tactical teams and operatives of the DSS. The statement also adds that four of the bandits, four of the terrorists were neutralized while others escaped with various degrees of injury. The tactical teams are however conducting a vigorous search to ensure the arrest of fleeing members of the group. Meanwhile, the Commission of Police, Rabi Husseini, while commending the officers, urged them not to relent until all criminal elements are apprehended. Also urging re residents of the Emo of Emo State to continue to avail them with useful information which will aid the fight against insecurity. The Emo State government has condemned the raising of the home of President General Ohanese Indipo, Professor George Obiozo. A statement signed by the Governor Hope Uzodimma attributes the attack to activities of those he describes as political bandits, noting that it is shameful and cowardly. While further describing it as the height of desperation by some politicians who have refused to heed the appeals to embrace peace, Governor Uzodimma says the government is working in concert with security agencies to identify and punish the perpetrators. He also laments the resort to incessant violence in settling political differences by some politicians in the state, warning that government will no longer condone such Banditry, stressing that perpetrators will face the full weight of the law. While commiserating with Professor Obiozo, whom he describes as a statesman committed to working for the good of the entire Igbo race, Governor Uzadima gives indigens of Imo State assurance that government will continue to do all within its power to protect lives and property in the state. Similarly, the Department of State Services says it has uncovered plans by some elements to stoke violence in parts of the country, particularly the North Central Zone. A statement by the Public Relations Officer of the DSS, Dr. Peter Afunaya, indicates that the aim is to cause ethno-religious crisis, ignite reprisal attacks and heat the polity. Similarly, the service says it is aware of a plot to use students University lecturers on strike, labor unions, disgruntled individuals and strategic groups, as well as exploit the global energy situation to carry out a mass protest like the NSARS protest. This is despite ongoing efforts by government to address the issues. The DSS warns the ring leaders and their cohorts to desist from such acts capable of causing breakdown of law and order, given assurance that the service will, in conjunction with other security agencies, go after the sponsors of this scheme and ensure the law takes its course. And in a continued effort to suppress smuggling activities, the Sector 4 unit of the National Border Drill Operations covering the Northwest has intercepted contraband with duty paid value of about 700 million naira. Shehu Adamu reports. 
while commanding the synergy between the drill and other security organizations, controller Ito to call on border communities to continue to cooperate with security operatives for the protection of lives and property, as well as development of the nation's economy. In this regard, I, I would like to tell uh, whoever wants to smuggle or engage in uh, any form of illicit border trade, transborder trade, to desist from it. Operatives of the drill refused 27% illegal entry into the country, facilitated the return of 85 illegal migrants back to Niger Republic, repatriated 16 persons to Niger Republic, and received 97 other migrants repatriated to Nigeria. 20 victims of human trafficking were rescued and brought to the headquarters of the Northwest Unit of the National Border Drill Operations in Kasana who were subsequently handed over to GBS Special Command of the Nigeria Immigration Service. In Katsina, Shehu Adamu, NTA News. As part of the 2022 World Oral Health Day, which has the theme, Be Proud of Your Mouth, dental experts are advocating proper oral care, which strengthens the teeth and reduces decay. Kelvin Samuel reports. Experts say a mouth with healthy gums, strong teeth, neutral breath, and a clean tongue often review the overall health and hygiene of a person as a mouth is one of the first places in the human body that shows symptoms of many illnesses. To maintain oral hygiene, experts recommend regular brushing of the teeth, decreased intake of sugar, eating of nutritious meals, and proper care for the tongue, among others. At a certain age, you begin to have problems chewing because you have a dental caries, you have cavities, and those are very painful things. And the dentist will advise you on some remedial things to do. A lot of folks feel that the teeth and, by extension, the mouth is not important. But we use it every second. We talk, we eat, we smile. It's a means of reaching out to one another. Research shows that dental health plays an integral part in the overall health of a person and taking it for granted, experts say, could lead to different health challenges. You need to also, um, also be mindful of the things that you eat. But personally, as an individual, I brush my teeth in the morning, I brush in the evening. The importance of oral health and the total well-being of an individual cannot be overemphasized. Hence, the observance of March 20th annually to mark the World Oral Health Day. The day brings to full need to create awareness on issues surrounding oral health and hygiene. In Uyo, Kevin Samuel, NTA News. Well, happy World Oral Day. Now, the 13th ECOWAS and the Sahel Meeting on Food. The 13th ECOWAS and Sahel Meeting on Food Security has ended with member countries indicating commitment to assisting smallholder farmers boost production. Musa Aliu reports. Food economy in West Africa and Sahel subregion is projected to reach $480 billion in 2030. The expected growth was actually booted to increase in the demand and supply of agricultural produce occasioned by population growth in the region. And this is why this meeting, attended by 15 countries in West Africa and the Sahel, agreed to intensify efforts towards boosting farmers' output. There is also a commitment to key into the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization programs in securing the development gains in the fight against hunger and poverty. This is apt, timely, and strategic. This is in accordance with the FOA strategic framework for the next decade, which seeks to support the 2030 agenda through the transformation to more uh, efficient, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable agri-food systems for the four Bs. That is better production, better nutrition, a better environment and a better life, leaving no one behind. There is also an appeal to West African countries to seize the opportunities to build resilient, agree food systems in the region and align with FAO strategic framework to address structural policy constraints. We are currently exploring how we can best support the federal government in its call for action to further transform food systems in Nigeria. 
In this connection, we see the strengthening of a market-oriented food systems approach as an integral component of the structural changes required to achieve the national sustainable development objectives. The FAO representatives in Nigeria and the Economic Community of West African States, Fred Kafiro, said FAO emphasized on the area of data analytics for generation of evidence to guide responsible investments and partnership for food system transformation. We commend the government for taking full advantage of FAO's corporate initiatives, including the Hand in Hand initiative, the Green Cities Initiative, and the Digital Village Initiative. These initiatives have provided platforms for greater synergies in building transformative partnerships for investments, particularly in digital agriculture solutions aimed at improving food security, nutrition, poverty reduction, and rural transformation. The resolution of the 13th meeting of the ECOWAS countries and the Sahel is expected to complement AU 2022 decision of food production and nutrition on the continent. Musa Aliyu, NTA News. Similarly, as nations within the African continent work towards meeting Sustainable Development Goal 2, aimed at ending all forms of hunger and malnutrition by 2030, a non-governmental organization, La Buena Vida, has undertaken humanitarian gesture to Durumi to share food items. Elizabeth Omori reports. Fava is a 60-year-old widow grappling with the economic impact of COVID-19. She's one of the beneficiaries of the gesture. It is the loss doing and favor that made this type of thing possible at this time. Because I know what many people who are myself are going through. But thank God for Jesus. This is a great gift and I know it's God behind it. It is a strategic gesture that many of the beneficiaries say came at the right time granting them access to safe, nutritious and sufficient food. We appreciate, we are thank for what you do for us. Because of the, uh, the COVID-19 problem, some lost their job, their businesses and other things. So if they're doing things like this, at least people put on many people's table. Feed the Family Project, which is the fourth in the series, is targeted at one million families. So absolutely by next year it's going to be season five. So we do another field of family, not only in Nigeria, but across African countries. We started last year. One of our core values is giving, you understand? And we give to the less privileged. When you take care of hunger, you gradually, practically reduce poverty. And when you reduce poverty, you know the end game? You are reducing crime across Nigeria and across Africa. Just like favor whose day was made, other beneficiaries advocate more complementary roles in meeting the plight of vulnerables for economic development. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NC News. We'll now pause for some messages. Panorama returns shortly. The vaccine offers hope for a safe country free of coronavirus. I urge all state governments, traditional and religious leaders to take the lead in the mobilization effort within their environment and spheres of influence. I similarly urge all eligible Nigerians to present themselves and be vaccinated in accordance with the order of priority already mapped out at the various authorized designated centers only. It's nice to know you're still watching Panorama and we're talking political matters. One of the frontline All Progressives Congress national chairmanship aspirants, former governor of Borno State, Ali Modu Sherif, has withdrawn from the race. Addressing the media in Abuja, Ali Modu Sherif said, respect to the president, who is the leader of the party, and the decisions of the party, which zoned the national chairmanship position to the North Central Geopolitical Zone, are reasons for his decision. Muhammad Buhari and the party 
I will not contest unless they have changed their mind between now and Friday. Otherwise, I will not offer myself for election when it has been clearly zoned out of my zone. Meanwhile, the National Convention of the APC is scheduled to hold March 26, 2022. The African Democratic Congress, ADC, says it is working out a strategy through conversation with Nigerians to win the 2023 presidential election. The national chairman of the party, Ralph Okimosu, disclosed this at a media briefing in Abuja. Timothy Yusuf was there. With the 2023 general elections getting closer by the day, the National Secretariat of the Action Democratic Congress has been receiving party leaders and members on consultation. This media engagement by the party is to reassure Nigerians that ADC will be out to participate fully in all elections. We want to move Nigeria to become a superpower nation in 20 years. 20 years from, the, from 2023. Nigeria is going to be a super poor nation. That's where we are going. Former presidential candidate of the Young Progressives Party in the 2019 election, Professor Kingsley Mogalu, now a member of the African Democratic Congress, officially announced his intention to again contest for the office of the president in 2023. While I commend the president for signing the bill and the National Assembly for passing it, let us simply prepare for elections in 2023 in the hope that those elections will be more free and more fair than any we have had in the recent past. For the People's Democratic Party, its national youth movement is appreciating the party's National Executive Committee for what it described as sensitive review of the price of nomination and expression of interest forms with 50% reduction for youth of 25 to 30 years of age. We want our party to please extend this guest room within this paid bracket from 25 to possibly 40 years, because these are the practical youth who are practically engaged in political process. Members of the movement enjoined the PDP to sustain what they described as his uncommon youth loving stride. Timothy Yusuf, NT News. Stakeholders have applauded the Northeast Development Commission for its inclusive approach to rebuilding the region after years of Boko Haram insurgency. Yunusa Suleiman reports. Gathered here are critical stakeholders from Yubi State, actively taking part in developing a 10 year master plan for implementation in the Northeast region by the intervention agency. During the engagement, Stakeholders who made sterling contributions described the initiative by the Commission as a right step in the right direction, the search for workable solutions to the numerous challenges affecting the sub-region for prosperity and sustainable development. Um, almost all the thematic area, we, we need them in the master plan, especially the issue of women inclusiveness in decision making. My hope and expectation is that we will come to understanding so that we have a developed and a progressive state. Focusing on 10 key areas including health, education, agriculture and infrastructure among others, the People's Driven Roadmap, when adopted, is expected to be a game changer in setting the region on a sound footing for economic recovery. You will be being one of the second one most affected state in terms of insurgency in the state. We have to contribute much in order to provide input for this very, very important master plan. The master plan shall contain programs and schemes that promote and facilitate the physical and the social economic development of the North East Zone. Divided into four phases. We have the recovery phase, we have the renewal, uh, you have the expansion and finally the sustainable development phase. The Commission has so far engaged critical stakeholders in three out of the six benefiting states of the region. In the Matru, Yenusa Suleiman, NTA News. 
Meanwhile, the federal government says remarkable progress has been achieved in the ongoing efforts at restoring electricity supply across the country following the recent disruption of supply. A statement by the Minister of Power, Abubakar Aliu, states that so far the gas pipeline affected by acts of vandalism has been restored and the Okpai power plant has resumed power generation. The Nigerian Bulk Electricity Trading PLC has also been directed to fast-track negotiation on an interim energy sales agreement with a view to bringing the new Okpai 2 power plant on the grid. The federal government also says in order to optimize the capacity utilization of the power plants owned by the Niger Delta Power Holding Company, the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission has approved special gas pricing for emergency contracting of gas from the Nigerian Gas Marketing Company Limited to increase generation. The federal government reassures all electricity consumers that all relevant agencies involved in the restoration of normalcy to power supply have been charged to act in the context of the emergency state of the industry. Professor, the newly sworn in governor of Anambra State, Professor Chukuma Soludo, has visited Okbai community, announcing that dredging work will start in the next two weeks. The governor also banned the activities of touts and illegal collection of revenue in the state. In them, Kalu reports. Local community is one of the biggest urban slums in the state and largely considered the place less conducive for human habitation due to its filthy environment with huge dump sites. The scope of work includes immediate cleanup of the environment and urban renewal drive. Governor Soludo promised to commence road construction work in the areas within the next two months and also rehabilitate the Onisha water scheme. He advised the inhabitants to be environment friendly. <laughs> The governor announced that henceforth all taxes will be paid directly into the state account. He warned market unions to desist from collecting money from prospective buyers. The governor was later hosted by Oboko community for matching action with his promise from Oboko in Omaru Council area in the Mkalo NTN News. Certainly displaced persons taking refuge at the Central Primary School have, have expressed despair and dejection following incessant terrorism activities in communities under Shiruru and Munya local government areas of Niger State. Representatives of the displaced persons in the camp conveyed the worries of the people to the state governor, Abubakar Saini Bellu, who visited them to restate government's commitment to ensuring that normal returns to the affected communities. Hussein Musa reports. The Central Primary School Goda has in the past few months provided shelter to a large number of displaced persons from Munya and Shururu local government areas where activities of terrorists have crippled both agricultural and social economic activities. Life in the camp, as attested to by the internally displaced persons, is not convenient as it is characterized by lack of basic necessities of life. <laughs> For the past seven years, we have been in and out of the community. We just want government to assist us. I had to sell my wrappers to feed my children. However, their expectations were heightened following the visit of the Niger State Governor Abakar Sanabalu to the camp. Within our limited resources, we must find ways to support some of these communities so that they will get their lives back and go back to their farms. The rains are fast approaching. If they don't go back to their farms, it won't be a problem for Niger alone, but a problem for Nigeria. Aside insecurity, some communities are also faced with the challenges of flooding as a result of activities of the hydroelectric dam in Zingiru, which has made their communities inhabitable. The state government has also promised to reach out to the appropriate ministry to release the relocation funds. Emena Hussain Musa, NTA News. Up next is Sports Update. Nigeria's female under-17 football